Hello and welcome to Bloomberg Cryptocurrency Analysis News and Education. My name is James Gore and this video is for the 30th of July 2018. I'm going to be jumping into our market update today in the technicals and the big three. Then straight into this news for the past 24 hours. I will be answering your comments in a separate video from the last video. I've had to take some time off due to a back injury. It's been uh, rather incapacitating, so sorry for being away, but I'm back. So kicking off into the market update. We can see that total market cap is still under 300 billion US dollars with a bit of a loss of valuation, uh, currently trading at 295 billion USD with Bitcoin's dominance really holding strong. I'm actually really impressed and surprised, impressed. I'm surprised uh, by how well Bitcoin is maintaining valuation compared to a bit of a market sell off and some variance in the market cap this, over the weekend. If we scroll through the top 100, we can see the majority of the coins these last 24 hours are seeing a pullback as is denoted from uh, this uh, column right here and just to let you know I'm using a different website coin paprika currently in beta Thought it'd be nice to mix things up uh, this website's based on recommendation of what someone commenting on these videos and uh, it does provide a few other useful metrics that you can really dig deep into for example if we go to market overview you can see uh, a few other stats like total market cap uh, bitcoin's market cap uh, how bitcoin's performing versus the rest of the markets in terms of if you invested a thousand dollars in this month versus you know, top 99 altcoins you can also see how volatile bitcoin is and of course the typical you know top top gainers the last 24 hours top losers the last 24 hours etc etc market dominance so moving on to technical analysis section i'm going to focus on the big three today i will do answer your comments and any ta on in from the last video again in a separate video but it's the week closed out and we can see bitcoin the key thing i was looking for btc was seeing it repeatedly trade over this resistance level now we broke above we didn't bounce and find support we actually broke below double tweezer bottom with a bit of an engulfing candle as well it's the first time seeing an engulf a bullish engulfing candle for a while and it's, it's actually quite a bullish sign now we also have another bullish sign signaling a trend uh trend uh, continuation candle this long lower wick thick body uh, it's a hammer essentially and be expecting confirmation relatively soon we followed up by an indecision candle and it looks like today's candle is signaling indec indecision as well so that's some micro things going on the more macro things going on we have this uh, another uh, pattern playing out right here we have flagpole upper resistance lower resistance uh, playing out so we have to kind of ha pay attention to a few different things again one of the things i'm looking for at the moment on the daily time frame to, to, to say that feel more confident that we're moving into a bull market is trading above this resistance level breaking above the 200 day moving average and trading above the 200 day moving average bouncing off from retesting so that's two decent support levels that we can actually say we are uh, trading above and the other one is Taking paying attention to the weekly time frame and breaking above the 50 day moving average and trading above it and bouncing off to high highs. Okay, so those that's that's the that's the kind of smaller aspects. Now, just looking at the weekly time frame, just to kind of round round this up, and we'll talk about which how what's likely to happen with BTC moving forward. We can see we have increasing bull volume on this move up. That's actually a really good sign. So what I'd be expecting is some type of decent consolidation or sideways trading before we actually do move up this is a bullish scenario before we actually do move up and break above the 50 day moving average now just remember we we have been continuous consistently rejected from this resistance level right here repeatedly and this is the first real time we've actually broken above and actually managed to bounce and retest above from that level with def decent volume as well it's not like we broke above and then you know all the bulls lost have lost their momentum uh, it seems like the bulls are still able to to keep the ball rolling so to speak we're look looking like we're about to get a confirmation for a trend reversal on the macd it is a lagging indicator paying attention to that signal line but what's more important is paying attention to the histogram because the histogram we get a much more information with regards to um, how things are actually moving and trading and anytime the histogram kind of crosses over we can see that there's a sharp decline in the histogram it's not so sharp actually it's moving from kind of uh, more bearish to bullish then it gives us more information and gives us indication which way things are headed last last but not least is the rsi to kind of pay attention to on a daily time frame we do need a cooling off period we do need some kind of slowdown if we pay attention to the rsi we can see we've actually been overbought uh not uh, not for a long time but we have to understand we're still rocking very close to overbought territory on the rsi on the daily time frame so i would expect a bit more sideways trading before we and a bit more of a cool off before we really see um any sharp sudden 
spikes in price action whether they be artificial or not it doesn't really matter just you know things to expect so just last thing moving on to the weekly time frame talking about uh the last thing i'll be looking for versus the rsi is if you if, you're, if we're looking at the rsi as a metric to kind of um chart some levels of support and resistance we can see you know we seem to be moving out of a flat period which is actually quite useful in terms of telling us and letting us know again looking at the weekly letting us know which way things are going to pick up now i don't expect the rsi to be increasing so sharply in fact i expect it to be more more reasonable like so um but this is a very slow flat uh, slow flattening bottoming uh uh, RSI at the moment so it's kind of telling us that at the moment um, things are going to be slowing down in terms of the, the direction they're moving in okay so uh, a few different uh, options and indicators looking at the bullish now the bearish case is very quickly um, a lot of these moves these breaks like so um, we could actually quite easily give away those those movements in if the bears regain uh, significant momentum okay it's not it's not unreasonable to expect that just because um, these are Marabozzi candles, there's no real levels of support or resistance all the way up. And that's why some sideways consolidation actually is really healthy on these steps up, just because it means if we do step down, we actually can find a reasonable base of support to find some uh, some levels to kind of play with and, and uh, set stop losses, not stop losses, set, set, uh, set uh, some price levels and targets. So that's it for BTC USD. Hope that was a nice overview. Uh, after the after the week closed out, looking at Ethereum USD, Ethereum is is a very interesting character. Uh, quite recently, the RSI is relatively flat, histograms flat as well, and the trading is has moved relatively flat. Now, if we're paying attention to to the price, this is actually relatively decent um, decent price uh, consolidation as well. One thing I'd argue that is is playing against it is just um, just how long it's been consolidating for from these spikes and how how significant these spikes have been now a good case is that we've had very low volume on these on these moves down and it looks like it's trying to find desperately trying to find support on a 26 moving average exponential or 12 moving average which is which is at 460 us dollars at the moment currently trading at 463 it's very close and we have resistance playing moving uh moving forward 50 day moving average and this is why i say moving averages long term and short term whether they be uh smooth or, or weighted are very useful because we can see here the 50 day moving average has essentially been resistance for one two three four five six seven eight nine candles this last couple of weeks perfectly so the minute we actually break above the 50 day moving average with some with some decent volume you can expect to see if ethereum really give some some price volatility some some nice upside but until then um it's it's a bit all to play for at the moment and there's a strong case at the moment that ethereum could break down and we could see that it finds support at the 442 usd level just because that's where the previous price history is and that's where this line is and that's where science and chart because it bounced off this level quite a few times in the past and that would be about a 63 dollar move approximately before i kind of reassess and expect us to kind of drop further to the 418 usd mark so that's a more bearish scenario and, and you know i'll be honest with you it, it does seem like that's that's possible but uh you know if we do see the market uptick today we can kind of see that we have a nice nice breakout moving on to ltc usd very similar scenario to ethereum at the moment in fact it's an almost uh, identical chart the only difference is rather than seeing uh fuller bodies we're seeing two indecision candles one today and one yesterday uh neutral dojis and re relatively flat rsi as well so I'd, I'd argue exactly the same thing uh, story for Litecoin as Ethereum. I'm not going to say anything different. I don't really see much of a difference in the chart. Um, practically the same thing. The only difference is the levels that we'd be paying attention to would be the 79 USD mark, currently trading at 83. And then the next stop down would be at 73 USD marks, so a much tighter range. Uh, moving on to BCH USD. So Bitcoin Cash is a slightly different story. I actually managed to break above the 50 day moving average of being rejected quite considerably and we can see we have a Maribosi candle so this is i'd argue a few steps ahead of ethereum and litecoin it's finding some very healthy consolidation on 12 and 26 moving average exponential currently trading at 822 us dollars with a nice trend reversal candle and trend continuation candle we have a reversal hammer finding a close above 12 and 26 moving average and a 50 day plus a uh, dragonfly doji uh, right after it which is essentially not quite confirmation for trend continue for trend 
trend continuation, but that comes in the candle after that. But there's two candles in, a, candles in a row signaling potential upside. So I'd expect to see, with decent volume as well, so I'd expect to see a bit of an uptick with BCH moving forward. Um, and that's it for the TA guys. So if you do want to learn TA, uh, I have a link in the description box below to a course, and we shall be moving on to the news. So there's a lot of Binance news today, guys. A lot of Binance news, and uh, we'll be covering all of it in a second. But first thing is Mithril. So Mithril is a cryptocurrency that's in contention to be listed on Binance right now. And I know a lot of you guys like a new kind of network, NKN. I tweeted recently, I posted in Telegram that there's currently a voting process going on in Binance. If NKN gets listed on Binance, it's likely to do exceptionally well in terms of price action. But one thing you guys should kind of be aware of is that the Mithril team has essentially been uh, rigging this the vote by sending uh binance tokens to people that could vote for uh mithril so and 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 trying to get as many votes as possible like, possible so a lot of people are calling for the uh for uh mithril to be disqualified because it's be become a joke and um and uh it's it's basically rigging the system for their own benefit so so uh you know, uh, it's 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 a pain in the butt that's happening, and the, the theme of all the videos I'm going to be releasing today is probably dodgy market, you know, do, dodgy business tactics essentially, because these these crypto projects are businesses, and there's a lot of things happening in the crypto space right now, and it just seems that human behavior and human nature is getting the worst, or something that could be really amazing at the moment. So just be aware um, if you want to kind of if you are holding NKN and you use Twitter, I suggest you tweet at Binance to say what, what Mithril is doing uh, is absolutely unacceptable and they should be disqualified because it means that Binance can actually respond and could do something. So you can you know uh, you can tweet directly at CZ and also at Binance Exchange. But I, I, I suggest tweeting at CZ. Um, if enough people get behind it then you know there could be some potential there. Moving on. So Talking about Binance, the next piece of Binance news, EOS withdrawals have been suspended on Binance ever since the EOS New York uh, put out their guide to moving your tokens off the exchanges. And one of the biggest criticisms of Binance has essentially uh, been that due to all the airdrops that have been going on regarding uh, whole, uh, EOS tokens, Binance has been able to kind of capitalize on that because they're holding your EOS tokens during the token swap. And there are so many airdrops initial 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 uh you know since the since the main launch that it is extremely profitable. Just it just makes sense to have been holding EOS in a separate wallet. Now, if you were one of the people that have missed out on that or chose to keep your EOS on Binance, that's absolutely fine, that's fine. But do bear in mind that Binance is uh, really limiting people's capacity to to re remove funds from the exchange, and it could be due to the fact that they're going to be holding or or benefiting from the airdrops, because you won't be you won't be benefiting from the airdrops. So, um, you know, I, uh, it's probably it's probably to make as much money as possible, um, you know, and within within their ethical. Uh, framework, or whatever their own ethno ethical framework is, and I would argue that Binance is probably one of the better exchanges. But I have noticed in the past that when it comes to airdrops with cryptocurrencies that are launching on Binance or getting listed on Binance, and then they have airdrops following, for some reason, for whatever reason, consistently, Binance always takes a longer time to, to actually do the mainnet swap, and then secondly, allow withdrawals from the exchange. So uh, do bear that in mind. It is something to kind of consider moving forward if you see any of your favorite tokens that are being listed on the Binance exchange and there is an option to to, to do uh, the token swap um, uh, client side or directly with your your crypto projects and not on, on an exchange such as Binance I would always recommend doing that firstly just because it means you're in control it does it can be a bit scarier because there's more risk involved in case you make a mistake but you should be personally responsible for cryptocurrency anyway if you don't really care about the airdrops that's absolutely fine uh, but I do I do recommend you know making the most of the money that you do have in this market to really you know invest and use as you please it does mean you can you know long term make some even more significant gains moving on so another piece of Binance news last piece of Binance news today so Binance is going to be offering cryptocurrency backed loans and this is really 
I'm a bit torn on this, but there there are some crypto projects, for example, Salt Lending, which you know provides cryptocurrency backed loan uh, lending system, and there are other uh, companies out there and projects out there are offering cryptocurrency backed loans. The issue I have with this, where it bothers me, is that Binance is a trading exchange. Essentially, I can understand someone wants essentially as well as I can understand one a company offering or crypto project offering crypto backed loans, just because. Um, the people that might be interested in using their service might not be looking to be uh, using it for trading or investing. They actually might have legitimate legitimate reason. They just want to interact with and keep their money in the crypto economy. And they may like the idea of smart contract based system where they can have their, you know, people that are offering funds have their money essentially locked up in a smart contract, et cetera, et cetera. So they might, they might like the, the benefits that blockchain offers um for for for, for you, know, off, you know offering offering a loan and you know you know receiving the benefits from it but we'll quickly go over this so cryptocurrencies are every day becoming more present in our daily lives displacing some of the most essential services and substituting traditional finance companies while doing so it seems that the next step of cryptocurrencies is to substitute banks in their role as middleman institutions to process and give credits one of the most successful cryptocurrency exchanges is going to do just that Binance has announced today that they will be partnering with a startup called Libra Credits who offer cryptocurrency backed credits through its platform, according to Finance Magnates. Again, it just something feels wrong about this. Um, while this is not a new offering because Uphold, another cryptocurrency and investment platform, has already signed a similar agreement to offer loans on their platform, uh, Binance is one of the most prolific and big exchanges in the whole world. While not being even a year old, it is ranked among the top exchanges in the volume trade, uh, in volume trade, trade volume, I should say, rather, according to CoinMarketCap. Um, this is why this agreement could potentially be a game changer for all the unbanked worldwide. A credit is something that is easy to get for some people, but for others worldwide, this is a dream. Banks as financial institutions put too many bureaucratic barriers for people to get access to a loan. This is why this initiative by Binance with legal credits is so important to push the boundaries and massively uh, massify the access to necessary credits to people that really need it. Binance announced that loans will be offered in three different ways. Cryptocurrency to fiat cryptocurrency to stablecoin, and cryptocurrency to cryptocurrency. And the crypto asset that would be used as a guarantor for the credit would be Binance's own cryptocurrency, Binance coin. Wow, I missed that. That is actually a massive deal, guys, if you're holding Binance coin. Holy shit. Um, with this move, Binance moves close to being an integral cryptocurrency bank, offering more than just cryptocurrency exchange. I think that is becoming a new trend for these kind of businesses lately. Okay, the one... Okay, there's a lot of good things there, and absolutely right. This is, there's a lot of people that just do not get through KYC, that just... Do not have bank accounts that could technically have collateral that they could um, use to basically loan out and lend out and make money off, which is fantastic. They can also, if they want, you know, get a get a loan uh, for whatever, for maybe for a business or something, which could mean that they have the, you know, open access to you know a lending market that they typically wouldn't be able to participate in. I mean, it does mean that economic growth in, in those in those areas should should technically increase for, for people that do have access to this. Um, the one thing, the one criticism is is the, the benefit of cryptocurrency, and I think this is probably just because we're still so early in the space. The one the one of the biggest benefits is that re removing the middleman, you know, is one one of the massive massive benefits. This isn't actually removing the middleman. This is removing uh, the old guard. This is removing a gatekeeper that has basically stopped and limited people from having access to this kind of product. So that's the traditional banking system. Now, um, removing the middleman would be having no Binance, just having a platform where they don't take any percentage of the loan or, or profit from the loan, or maybe they do, maybe a, a minuscule one, um, but it's actually directly with another individual rather than uh, B to C, business to customer, which is what this actually is. So I think it's actually fantastic. Last point to take away from this, Binance is, is, seems like they're doing everything possible to make their Binance coin as, as much of a utility token as possible in varying different ways. And it's actually very tricky to kind of, if this was a traditional market, it'd be very tr tricky to, and now the Binance token was a stock, it'd be very tricky to kind of work out the actual value of their token because they're, they're tying it into trading fees which is fantastic that's fine they're tying it into uh their decentralized exchange they're tying up with this business loan that something some other things i keep forgetting and you know in traditional market you would base on profits and etc cetera, etc cetera, and how a company's performing but a lot of what they're doing with the binance coin is actually rather isolated from um 
from a from a project perspective there's no single use of this token so definitely going to worth holding binance coin and that reading this is definitely shift shifted by perspective of binance coin to the more bullish long term uh, it was already bullish but it's, it's just slightly more bullish moving on to the next story so mastercard ceo calls cryptocurrency junk on a u.s visit so during the new india lecture and at the Indian consulate in the u.s this week mastercard ceo aj banger went on a full attack on against cryptocurrency calling it junk during his time on stage where he was taking questions from the audience on crypto trade he went on to say that such an anonymized form of currency with such wild fluctuations in the market couldn't be regarded as a medium of exchange, except it's already being used as a medium of exchange, which is why that's so hilarious. Uh, the, secu- the lecture was organized as part of a series hosted by the Constellate in tandem with the US-India Strategic Partnership Forum. Bangor was wasted little time explaining that cryptocurrency is responsible for more than 95% of illegal online transactions on the dark web. Okay, so oh, I just love when people say things like that because it's so hilarious. Um, yeah, that's that's what what else would these people use? But bear in mind that that you know transactions on the dark web constitute for zero point five percent or one zero point five to one percent of all cryptocurrency transactions, and that's I would argue that's that's it's even better than Mastercard network. To be fair, um, I don't have the stats stat on the Mastercard network, but. I really would not be surprised. Um, in terms of ranking, it's you know cryptos are actually the lowest. Uh, then I think it's not oil. I think it's credit and debit cards and cash, US dollar, and then oil. Um, so you know that kind of says what it says. But this is this is very interesting because the Mastercard network was recently down a few months ago. Within the last few months, the Visa the Visa network as well. Um, it's you know that saying saying that obviously it just seems like you know someone that is in direct competition with cryptocurrencies has an issue and is going to is shitting on cryptocurrencies that's just what it seems like it seems like uh, a defensive you know outcry and i'm not trying to say this to kind of be um keep my you know blinkers on and keep my head in the pardon me in the sand and ignore but actual valid criticisms but the thing is they're not really valid they're not I'd, I'd happy to hear criticisms but as long as they're based on statistics and actual facts rather than uh you know rather than on on uh emotion which is what it seems like so it's, it's always it's always nice reading someone like this in again old guard criticizing the cryptocurrency space but not really having any anything significant to say that we haven't really heard so far so you know, that's my opinion on that. Moving on to the next piece of news. So, Pantera Capital posts 10,000% gain over five years, calls for Bitcoin to head higher. So, Pantera Capital, one of the most foremost cryptocurrency and blockchain-centric investment firms, recently announced that it has reached its five-year anniversary, issuing a report on the progress it has made in that span of time. Uh, so, shortly after the grand opening of Pantera, Dan Moorhead, firm's fervent leader and the CEO released such an email to his investors highlighting the first price prediction they made for the foremost and the most successful digital assets. An email titled Bitcoin Forecast Number 5, August 21st, 2013, Warhead wrote, I was discussing Bitcoin with an investor yesterday and he replied somewhat dismissively, dismissively to it, just like buying gold. No, it's not like buying gold in... It's like buying gold in 1000 BC because 99% of the financial wealth has yet to address Bitcoin. When they do, Bitcoin is either going to be worth zero or 5000 BTC. That's in 2013. That's still yet to happen, which is what's hilarious, and it's reached 20,000. The CEO of Pantera went to talk about how there's, there's north of 50% chance that the world will adopt a cryptography based payment system, replacing the high fees charged by traditional institutions. Dan also noted that if a cryptocurrency, whether it be Bitcoin or not, can succeed, it will become the first global currency since gold and the first borderless payment system. It is important to note that that at the time this email was released, Bitcoin was a mere $104 with a 1.4 billion dollar market capitalization but it wasn't clear what the time frame this year was allotting to the prediction looking back was clearly to see that bitcoin had surpassed the original price prediction so pantera has uh, really crushed it and just quickly talking about some projects they've invested in uh, they've invested in projects like auger brave shapeshift zero x 
Circle, Zappo, and Ripple. Just bear in mind these aren't pure cryptocurrencies. It's not like this, like uh, they're just investing in cryptocurrencies. They're also investing in stocks as well related to the cryptocurrency space, and and also angel investing in in uh, startups as well in crypto space. So uh, let's quickly talk about their current predictions. So their current predictions are Bitcoin is 21k by the end of this year, and Bitcoin is 67,000 dollars by the end of next year. Um, that's their target estimations. This chart. So that they, they have they have a chart they've plotted. And I think this is also quite fair based on the median trend line of BTC at the moment. Um, I, I haven't had the shift walk up on the BTC chart for a while. I took it down, but it does actually align that Bitcoin is going to reach a hundred hundred thousand dollars at its at absolute spike at its parabolic move and something more more conservative around 50 60k as well and the median line is somewhere in the middle um, so it's not unreasonable to 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 kind of see these predictions but um, I'll, I'll leave it there but this is it's really it's really nice to see uh, an investment firm in based in the crypto space providing returns that you just wouldn't see anywhere else the one thing i would say is that bear in mind that um this this is a very unique situation i i you know we should if we, if we were to look at all the investment firms that are operating in the crypto space for the past five years it'd be interesting to see how they've all performed versus pantera capital um moving on to some very quick fun news so ledger's launched two new apps for the nano s hardware wallet hodl and recovery check Again, if you don't have a Ledger Nano, I highly recommend you grab one. It's a nice physical hardware wallet. And uh, I actually have an affiliate link below. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything, but uh, it does help support the channel if you buy one below. Um, on Thursday, 26th of July 2018, cryptocurrency hardware wallet, Ledger announced two new apps for Ledger and Nano S to further reinforce user security, HODL and recovery check. So uh, just very quickly, the HODL app, when receiving crypto on your Ledger and S, there are times such as when withdrawing funds from a crypto exchange when you need to enter a wallet address on your computer. However, it can be easy to mistake to make a mistake when typing the wallet address. The purpose of this app is to eliminate the need to type in the address of any of the wallets residing on your Nano S or making your device appear to your computer as a virtual keyboard. Why this is significant as well is it also means any kind of man-in-the-middle attack or any kind of malware that you have on your computer when it comes to keyword logging so you know there could be malware that's you know just looking to uh log passwords or addresses or private keys um can't snoop and also means that any malware that you may have on your computer that targets your clipboard so for example when you copy and paste the wallet address over it means that it can't it's it's completely bunk it's it can't it, it can't uh uh it's not able to kind of deal with this the hodl app on the Ledger Nano. Next one is the recovery app. So in the event of loss, theft, or destruction of your Ledger Nano S device, if you forget the PIN for your device, you'll need your 24-word recovery phrase to be able to restore your balances on a compatible software or hardware wallet. But, but how can you confirm that you've correctly recorded, e.g. written down somewhere, this recovery phrase? Until this app came along, the only way to do so was to reset your Legend Nano S and choosing the restore configuration option, which is unfortunately takes a long time. The recovery check app makes this verification quicker and easier. When you run it on your Legend Nano S, it prompts you to enter each of the 24 words in the recovery phrase. Thankfully, it is not necessarily necessary to enter every character in the, in the 24 words. It's just a recovery phrase matches and what the device expects. So a letter from each uh, phrase. So this is actually really fantastic. Uh, Ledger's doing some some uh, really great things. Last piece of news with Ledger, which is based on Monero, which is finally, thank God, uh, uh, Ledger uh, Monero, rather, the updated Monero GUI wallet offers direct Ledger hardware wallet support. So um, finally, it's going to be an interaction between the, the, the Ledger uh, Monero wallet and, and Ledger. So there's a way to basically handle Monero on your Ledger Nano. In a, in a kind of tertiary way, but it's actually pretty pretty big news for Monero and good news, which is fantastic. Last piece of news, I'm going to talk about Nasdaq. So, Nasdaq increases exchange customers and looks to police cryptocurrencies. So, there was essentially this weekend, not this weekend, a few days ago, a um, not not a not a secret meeting, but a closed door meeting between uh, the you know. The guys at Nasdaq and some 
figures in the cryptocurrency space. Now, I haven't spoken about the ETFs on this channel. I'm going to do a separate video. It's probably coming out today, talking about the ETF rejection. You know, the Winklevoss ETF was rejected, but that you know the CBOE one, that one we actually were, we were paying attention to, still on the table. Um, but the focus of this meeting was to essentially um, provide more security, stability, and liquidity, and reduction in market manipulation uh, to the cryptocurrency space as a whole. Now, this is Nasdaq that are the ones uh, calling this meeting. This isn't this isn't the cryptocurrency space going over to Nasdaq, and it's partially because they're providing a cryptocurrency project, which is not project product, which is currently being used by some exchanges when it comes with regards to KYC and. Uh, uh, and trade monitoring. So it's called the smartest trade monitoring technology. Um, Gemini is contracted to it and um, basically enables them to to pre help prevent market manipulation. And it's something we'd love to see on something like a bit for next, but it's there. And um, what what this is saying is that there's a there's a there's a real there's a strong desire from NASDAQ, and we've seen this because they've they've focused on cryptocurrency trading desk as well, opening up relatively soon. Um, Real desire for Nasdaq to jump into the cryptocurrency space. This is this isn't um, this isn't something that should be taken lightly. So it's really fantastic news in the fact that this is happening at all. But uh, again, until we get some clarity with regards to ETF, regards to regulations, then you know this 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 whole space is going to probably blow up, pretty pretty much explode. So do uh, do get ready, guys. I keep saying it, but do get ready. So that's it for today's video, guys. Really do appreciate it. If you want to support the channel, the best way to do so is to subscribe to YouTube and hit the notification bell so you can be alerted to any news uh, or any videos I release. I'll be doing a live stream later today talking about some uh, it's essentially a hostile takeover of uh Bitcoin, which is it seems like it's happening. I'll be touching on a, on a single point, and I'm going to present both sides of the equation as honestly as possible. Um, we'll also be releasing a video relatively soon. Now I can actually record again um, on the ETF situation because I think it does desire some attention and merit, just so you're not personally swayed in terms of opinion and you can remain as objective as possible. So thank you so much, guys. If you want to support the channel, you can do so via Patreon as well as the link in the description box below. Thank you so much. Hope you have an amazing day. I shall catch you very soon in the next video. Wishing you guys all the best.